I'm in a wheelchair as a nurse wheels me to an Uber waiting for me. Nurse stops near the car. Driver opens the car door to let me in. He helps me into the car. I go to shut the door. A hand stops it from closing. Laura. Laura's here. And she looks furious with me. Oh, oh. I'm in big trouble. Hello, Sean. Not in the mood for this, Laura. You're not in the mood for what? What am I doing that's upsetting you? Shout at me and get it over with. I'm not shouting at you, Sean. Fine. Yes. I was hospitalized. Went in for an initial check and the doctors found... something. Admit it. What did they find? I can't say. What do you mean you can't say? Can't say... because I don't know. Are you lying to me? Oh. Been in the hospital all week trying to get the results of what my doctors found out. I still don't know. I'll ask again. What did they find? Don't know. Still searching for answers. Being honest, I promise. Is it serious or just a scare? Have the doctors found something that might result in me planning your funeral? Not in imminent danger of dying. That's why they released me. Why do I feel like there's more to this tale you're not telling me? Are we done? Can I go now? Yeah, as soon as you tell me why you felt the need to hide this from me for a week. I had my reasons. I'm waiting to hear them. I'm thinking. You're thinking of whether you can lie out of this situation? But guess what, jerk? I'm not giving you that chance to lie to me. I will get to the truth. Look, I promise you. Not trying to lie. Then lead with the truth and finish with the fact. Please tell me what I need to hear. Didn't want to trouble you. You didn't want to trouble me. That's your excuse. Do you take me for a fool? Kind of. You ask. <laughs> or it glares at me. That's what is known in some circles to be a joke. I was kidding. Do I mean so little to you that you'd treat me like I'm a moron? No. Look, can't explain why I kept my hospitalization from you. Okay. So if I didn't have a dad who could track you down today, would you have felt the need to tell me what was happening to you? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. You're unbelievable. I'm sorry. Sorry doesn't change the fact that you felt a huge desire to hide essential things from your girlfriend. Have we decided that you're... at... yet? Have a great life, Sean. Laura takes off walking. Aura! I was kidding! Aura! He's gone. I'm out of my wheelchair, pacing across the street from where Laura lives. Hope she'll see me and come out to talk to me. Doubt it. A man can wish. Anyway, as I've been answering my calls, she's been avoiding me for the last two days. Worried I could lose her. Laura walks home with a male friend. Laura sees me. Guy kisses her on the cheek and exits. Laura walks over. What are you doing here? Is your friend. He's... cute. He's a work colleague. We worked late and he didn't want me to walk home alone at night. See? That's what you call honesty. So you have... friends that are men. What do you want, Sean? I'm here to apologize. For what? Be precise. Not that you're capable of that feat. Want to apologize for how I handled things a few days ago. It was stupid. No. Stop it. Has anyone ever told you you're cute when you're pissed off? Laura glares at me. What? War. Fine. Choose to ignore me. I don't want your apology. You made it clear I wasn't your girlfriend. You embarrassed me, and now I've moved on. That big-headed work jerk? Are we done? Can I go? Want to explain why I didn't initially tell you I was hospitalized? Okay, let me hear it. Go to speak. 
nothing comes out. If I thought I could kiss you and get away with it, I'd so do it because of how cute and funny you are right now. Please stop with the jokes and just tell me the truth. Don't know what to say. Sean, the truth can be scary, but lies are more harrowing. The truth can hurt, but a lie hurts more. Take a beat to think. Are you capable of the truth? Let's go inside and find out. I'd rather we talk here. Cold. Us you live in a bad part of town. Scared of a drive-by. Or smirks. He tries to hide it. I've seen it. We'll talk upstairs, so don't lie to me again. Have you got that? Yes, ma'am. You're such a dick. Sorry, but why are you being offended by that now? You've known that about me from the minute we knew each other. Laura walks off, rolling her eyes. <laughs> Laura's cutting my sandwich in half with a knife. Walk up to her from behind. Move her hair so I can kiss her neck. Sean, I'm holding a sharp knife. Please don't make me wound you with it. Wouldn't dare. Please don't put me to the test. That's settled. I'm scared of you. I'm waiting for the truth. Laura, I was scared. I was afraid of how you would react if my doctors told me I had days to live. Oh. Thought entered my brain. It scared the life out of me. Then, it started swirling in there like a tornado. You should have talked to me. No. The only way I knew I could shut down that terror of thinking about your reaction was by completely shutting you out. I'm sorry. No. I'm pathetic. <laughs> yeah, you are. You always know how to make me feel better. It's a unique gift. So proud. Jerk. What happens now? We eat, spend the night talking, and call in sick for work in the morning and talk some more. That sounds like a solid plan. Just one thing. Do I know everything? Is everything out in the open? Stumble on my words as I say the following. Yeah. Promise. Are you sure? You don't seem confident in that assurance. I'm worried. I promise. You know everything. I'll try again. My dad is reporting on you for me, so if you have anything to say to me, this would be the time to speak up and let me know. I start to blush and sweat. My breathing starts to elevate. You know everything. You're sweating and turning red. Maybe I should go. Where? Home. We'll talk in the morning. What are you hiding from me? Nothing. See you in the morning. Sean disappears to the front door. He opens it and exits. Meanwhile, I take out my cell phone. I call my dad. Dad, it's me. Sean's heading your way to cover his ass. Can you send me that report you've been working on? Thanks. Oh, I know you two are buds now, but can you not tell him I know what he's up to? I want to confront him later. Thanks, Dad. Bye. I love you too. Laura hangs up her phone. You want to play with me, Sean? Well, you're in the arena with the devil. Bring it on, motherfucker. Just bring it. I enter Laura's apartment. There's a laundry bag by the door. I'm guessing it's my belongings. Laura walks over with a smile. She has a smug look about her. Did you not rub it in? I know I messed up. I want to hear you hold up your hands to your mistakes. What difference will it make? It'll prove you're a man for one thing. Let's start with the important stuff. I've finally been diagnosed with sarcoidosis. Disease is the growth of small collections of inflammatory cells. It affected my heart. Hence... I thought I had another heart attack, so I've been given steroids, and that's meant to counteract the disease and slow it down. I... I'm 
glad you're okay. Want to know what I've been hiding? I already know. My dad sent me the report he was doing on you. I know everything. The least I can do is explain it from my point of view. So please, hear me out. I'll grant you that request. As you know, Harry, my ex-wife, was at the hospital during my stay there. And it's finally out in the open. Harry heard through a mutual friend I was in the hospital, so she came to visit me. Did you want to see her? No. Did you make that clear to her? Yes. So she stayed anyway? Why didn't you get security to remove her? Hey, I don't know. I felt lonely and scared, and she offered support, so I took it. You confirm you asked her to leave? Yes, but she insisted on staying. So all this happened while I was at home, wondering what I'd done wrong to make you ghost me? There's no excuse for what I did. I was worried about the possibility of dying. So I stupidly let her stay with me. You chose to have her with you. Instead of me, you chose your ex over me. I guess I did. You should have chosen me. That we agree on. Did Carrie want something? <sighs> There's no winning you back. So I'll lead with the truth. Carrie told me she made a mistake wanting to divorce me. So she wanted you back? Not that it makes a difference. I rejected her. I told her where to go. Lessens the pain to hear that. I rejected her because it was at that moment I knew I was in love with someone else. That someone is you. You should have just told me the truth. Harry came to see me two days before I got discharged. I was confident you'd think she was at the hospital the whole time if I told you. Plus, she kept coming to the hospital. I knew if you two faced each other, it could have gotten heated. I didn't want you to fight over someone who didn't deserve to be fought over. Once again, you should have told me! Yeah, well, I didn't. But I'm going to live to regret my decisions. You sure are. I grabbed my laundry bag. I look at Laura. You made your bed. Lie in it. Will time and space heal us? We'll have to see, won't we? I'm afraid to be without you. You need to be brave and tackle your fears. Turn to leave. So you know, I'll miss you. Turn around to face Laura. You won't miss me as much as I'll miss you. You weren't just the center of my life. You were my entire life. You too. I lived in this world because of you. Because you were everything to me. Boy, I'm getting teary. Aura wipes away tears. The world is shattered and broken. I only have myself to blame. Some things are just not meant to be. This should have been. I let it slip away. I tossed our relationship down the toilet. We're both to blame. No. I made our lives a bitch. There's only one person to blame. That's yours truly. I'm the biggest idiot on earth. <laughs> Tears enter her eyes again. Take care, Sean. You too. I walk up to Laura and aim to kiss her on the cheek. But our mouths connect. I instantly shoot backwards. I gather myself and then exit without looking at Laura. Laura looks in tears. As I walk towards the lift, I'm lost to the pain about to arrive at my door. My world is in darkness. My world is on the axis of hell. This lonely path will hurt. This was Ready for Love. It was voiced by me, Amanda McKnight, and Jake Johnston. The show was written, produced, and directed by Joao Nacida. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Ready for Love. Please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and be sure to subscribe to the podcast on all your favorite podcast listening apps. Also, please share this series with family and friends. Thank you. That Love Podcast is active on Twitter at That Love Pod, and on Instagram and Facebook at That Love Podcast.